is to our God. Say, every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Let's declare every, every praise is to our God. Say, every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing God, say, God my Savior, God my healer, God my deliverer. Yes, He is. Yes, He is. Every praise is to our God, and every word of worship with one accord. Say, every praise, declare, every praise is to our God. I feel like declaring every praise is to our God. Sing every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship we want to call. Every praise, every praise, every praise is to our God. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. I don't, I don't, I don't feel like we we get into every praise. It's to our God and every word of worship with one accord. Say every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing every praise, every praise is to our God. Every word, every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise, every praise. It's to our God. Hallelujah. Uh, we bless your name, O oh God. Lord. From the rising of the sun to the going Thank down, you. you're Thank still you, the same. You're God. We bless your name. Bless yes, God. Come on, lift your voices. Lift your voices. We bless your name, O oh God. Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name. Let's lift our hands and declare Jehovah is your name. Oh, 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 oh. 
mighty warrior, mighty warrior, great in battle, Jehovah is your name. hands and declare Jehovah is your name Jehovah is your name Jehovah is your name let's declare that tonight Jehovah is your name Sing, say, mighty, mighty warrior, great, great in battle, Jehovah, Jehovah is your name. is his name tonight amen, amen. come on shout a hallelujah in the house shout a hallelujah in the house i don't know how many you're going through something you know i don't know what it is what you're going through but when we come into the house of the lord and we start to declare that jehovah is his name we enlarge our mouths over the mouth of the enemy and we declare that jehovah is his name mighty warrior Great in battle We declare might Mighty warrior Great in battle Jehovah is your name One more time we declare mighty Hallelujah. Glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise His holy name. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I feel like somebody needs to declare. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Jesus. Great in, in battle, in battle Jehovah, Jehovah is your, your name. name. You're mighty, you're a warrior, oh, and you're great, great in, in battles. Battle. Hey. Jehovah is your name, your name, your name, your name, yes, Lord. You're mighty, you're a warrior, and you're great, great in battle. Jehovah is your name. He has risen from, from the dead and he is Lord and every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. before we hand over let's just declare you are Lord hallelujah yes, Lord. hallelujah yes, Lord. Jesus and you have risen from
Thank you, Lord. Uh, bow down and worship Him. Hallelujah. Worship Him. Oh, yeah. We're just going to do that part and then we just go into oh, yeah. our service. Let's worship Him. Let's worship Him. He deserves a praise tonight. Amen. Bow down and worship Him. Worship Him. Oh, worship Him. With our hands lifted, we declare bow down. Bow down and enter in, enter in, oh, enter in, consuming fire. Somebody bless the Lord. Somebody bless the name of Jesus. Somebody worship him. I, I, I know the praise team have been doing a very lovely job. And we, we have been little tapping here and there and a little shout here and there. But I feel like somebody really need to worship God in this place. I, I felt like somebody need to beckon heaven. Heaven needs to know that there's a church here tonight. And something is happening here in Soul Spring tonight. We, we're not just gathering, just gathering for gathering's sake. Uh, but there's something is happening here tonight. Can we call? All is heaven attention. I, I, I don't know. You're here for a seminar. You're here to listen. You can't wait for the, 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 the doctor and the reverend to come. But you want something from God. Maybe you, you came and there, there's a deliverance that you need. And he is saying, I, I know you come to this seminar, but I want to touch you. 
I wish somebody would just would just lift their hands and just worship him. Just take take 10 seconds, take 20 seconds and, and just give God glory. Just give him glory. Just just honor his name. He, he is Lord. Uh, he is King of Kings. He is Lord of Lord. Uh, uh, he, he has risen from the, from the grave and he is Lord. He is a conquering land of the tribe of Judah. The man said, I've searched all over. Still couldn't find nobody. I look high and low. Ain't nobody greater than you Lord and tonight I am here to give you glory tonight I'm at this seminar and, and guess what I came inside here for a blessing I came here and, and there's something that is not right but God you're gonna fix it tonight I know it's not a crusade. I know it's not a, a deliverance service. But God, I'm not leaving tonight. Unless you speak to me. Because your word said we are two or three are gathered. And as we touch anything concerning you. God, you are going to do something. And so I believe that not only the impartation of the word and wisdom and knowledge of God that will be done tonight but if you feel like get up and make a run run if you feel like give a shout and, and, and something eat you while the presentation is happening hallelujah let me greet the old soul of faith it is a pleasure to be here tonight worshiping with the Family Life Ministry under the hospital sister Stephanie Taylor Simit, I believe. It's really a pleasure to be here worshiping, worshiping with you guys. I'm going to invite at this time Sister Merlene Gordo Wisdom to come and she will be doing the opening prayer for us and also will be going straight into the devotional exercise. So please remain standing. Bless the Lord. I'm not sure why Brother Johnson is changing my name. But it's not wisdom, it's actually Williams. Oh. <laughs> I must greet the whole soul of faith in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm going to ask everybody to stand for our devotion. I came prepared with my scripture and song from the hymnal but based on the atmosphere you know the Lord chooses to change things sometimes we're going to be reading from Psalm 148 I'm going to ask you please to listen while I read and it reads thus praise the Lord praise the Lord from the heavens praise him on the heights Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you stars of the light. Praise him, you heavens of heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He also established them forever. He made a decree which shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and all the depths. Fire and hail, snow and clouds, stormy wind fulfilling his word, mountains and all hills, fruitful trees and all cedars, beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying fowl, kings of the earth and all people, princes and all judges of the earth, both young men and maidens, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above the earth and the heaven, 14 and last. And he has exalted the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, of the children of Israel, 
O people near to him. Praise the Lord. Here in this portion of God's holy word, we honor it by saying, thanks be to God. I'm going to ask the praise team to join me with singing, He's worthy, God's worthy. He is worthy, God's worthy, almighty creator, alpha, omega, beginning and the end. Glory, glory, Lord God almighty, which was and is, and he is to come. He is worthy, God's worthy. Almighty Creator, Alpha, Omega, beginning and the end. Holy, holy, Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to
Lord is worthy to be praised. Bow your heads with me, please, as I pray. Father, we exalt you. We lift you up. We praise you. Because you alone are worthy. You alone are worthy, O oh God. You created the heavens and the earth. You spoke everything into being. You are God Almighty. You are the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. There is none like you. We thank you, Lord, for this privilege. We thank you that we can come together in your sanctuary to lift you up. We thank you that your spirit our lives. And as we're here in the seminar, it is all about you. And so God, help us to decrease while you increase. And I pray in the name of Jesus that our hearts will be richly blessed. And that when we shall leave here, we shall say it was good for us to be here. I pray that you will cover the presenters. I pray that you will bless them and everything will come forth with clarity and our minds will be open and receptive to what is being presented so that we can gain knowledge and wisdom. We thank you, Father, and we tell you thanks. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Come on, bless the Lord, somebody. Come on, somebody, bless the name of Jesus. Embracing the king in me. Embracing the king in me. Who is our king? Who is our king? We first have to profess and proclaim who the king is that we are embracing. Who is our king tonight? Who is the king of who you are? Jesus is our king. And tonight we are embracing the king in me. Paul says it is not I that live but the Christ the King who lives in me and so tonight we are embracing that blessed Holy Spirit we are embracing the King of who we are I must tonight acknowledge the presence of the host pastor Reverend Carl Wisdom and his wife Lisa Wisdom, I must also acknowledge my host pastor that is with us tonight, Bishop Howard Nelson. It is good to have you and also acknowledge our district director for the Family Life Ministry, Sister Stephanie Taylor Simmit, and of course she's at the back. But to do the official welcome tonight, let me invite the director for the Glendevon New Testament Church, Brother Alex Green, to come and make us feel welcome. Could we make him feel welcome as he comes? I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it, and they are saved. Hallelujah. Good night, Glendevon District of Churches. Good night, Glendevon District of Churches. Hallelujah. Good night, good night, good night. But before I go any further, as always, we want to welcome the Holy Trinity in our midst. So let's just give a clap offering as we welcome the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost in our midst tonight. Hallelujah. I just want to greet the host pastor of the Salt Spring Church, Reverend Carl, w Carl Wisdom, our district overseer. He is not here, but... We greet him just the same. The Bishop R.T. Powell and his wife, Paulette, Reverend Paulette Powell, and to the pastor of the Lilliput New Testament Church of God, Reverend Nelson, we greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. To our regular members and friends, we greet you and we welcome you. We welcome each and every one on the district. All those who are here from Lilliput, let me hear you give a shout. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Cornwall Courts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glendevon. Hallelujah. And I'm sure Salt Spring has to be here. So Salt Spring. 
Hallelujah. And how could I leave out our district family life director, Sister Stephanie Smith? We welcome you. And also to the wife of the host pastor of the Salt Spring New Testament Church of God. Um, Dr. Wisdom, we welcome you, ma'am. And I hope that you all just have a wonderful time in the Lord. I see our presenters, they are here. That's Dr. Emmins and Pastor Mullins. We welcome you both tonight. And it's a privilege having you here. Amen. And tonight, how could I forget the theme that we are going under tonight? Embracing the King in me in our men's seminar tonight. Yes, it is more for the men, but we welcome each and every one just the same. For all those who are online, we welcome you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Our praise team is gone. They have been doing so well tonight. We welcome them. Our musician uh, it was Reverend Wisdom and Reverend Nelson was playing for us tonight they are not just anointed to preach but also they are can they can they are talented with the instrument so the lord bless you reverend wisdom and our new musician who are here welcome 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 to each and everyone and do have a blessed night and in the same breath i will just bring greet greetings on behalf of the di our district overseer bishop rt powell who unfortunately he would have liked to be here tonight but due to certain situation he is not able to make it here tonight and so he would like to send his greetings to each and everyone the lord richly bless you and do enjoy the rest of your night Thank you very much, Alex. Come on, put your hands together for the man of God. Yes, man. Yes. Tonight, to bring greetings to us is our district director, Sister Stephanie Taylor Smith. And I'm going to ask the congregation to stand and make our district director feel welcome. Can we stand and, and make her feel welcome to the podium? Thank you very much. Yes. A wonderful, wonderful woman of God. Hallelujah. Sister Simit. And sisters, hallelujah. You may be seated. Thank you so much. It is a privilege to be here in the house of the Lord tonight. I want to acknowledge the presence of the Holy Spirit, my pastor, Reverend Wisdom and Dr. Wisdom, Reverend Nelson, in the absence of Bishop Powell, I do say it was a privilege because he is the one that gives the permission for this. By now you would know, I struggle with the voice, but the Lord will deliver. I want to bring greetings to our presenters, Dr. Hemmings and Reverend Bishop Mullins, it's a pleasure for you to be here. I want to say thank you all. I'm looking forward to a wonderful night. A night where we will be empowered, not just our men, but us as women, to ensure that we take care of the men who we love. Greetings, brothers and sisters. Blessings in the name of the Lord. Have a good night. Come on, put your hands together for the woman of God. Uh, very, very dedicated and hard worker in this kingdom. I have the opportunity, I was talking to her earlier when I came, I have the opportunity as district youth director working with her, very hard worker in the kingdom. Wonderful, wonderful woman of God. We are going to dive right into our first presenter tonight. And so at this time, I'm going to invite Dr. Lisa Wisdom to join us here on the platform of course she's the first lady of this church can we put our hands together for her yes thank you she will be coming to introduce to us our first speaker and it's focused tonight i am the temper christ lives in me dr wisdom
In Jesus' name. Amen, somebody. Okay, so let me greet you well. I greet our moderator, the host pastor of the Salt Spring Church, Reverend Wisdom, and my, you know, one and only. I greet Reverend Nelson. Some about the place. Hail up Reverend Howard Nelson. Um, in his absence, I acknowledge our district overseer and the persons of, uh, in the person of Bishop uh, Powell and uh, Reverend Paulette Powell, the pastor of the Cornwall Courts Church. We acknowledge them. I want to big up my fearless leader in family life, Sister Stephanie Sheldon, excuse me, Taylor Smith. Um, <laughs> oh God, you have to have energy to work with Steph. Amen, somebody? Um, anything you want to get done, call Steph. Amen? So C-A-L-L. S-T-E-F. Amen, somebody. Yeah. So I acknowledge her and all the board members from Family Life. God bless you. Um, it's finally here, and soon we can sleep. Say amen, somebody. Praise God. It is an, it is an inestimable uh, pleasure. Oh, looking at the camera, we greet our YouTube audience. So all of those who are joining us on the www Glendavon page. Greetings, God bless. Yes, so it's my pleasure tonight, Mr. Chairman, to introduce this gentleman to you. And when I say gentleman, I mean gentleman. He goes by the name Dr. Selburn Hemmings. He was born in Kingston, Jamaica. So sometimes you know persons for years and you never know some things about them until you're reading their introduction, right? Brother Matthew, oh, Brother Matthew, you're here. Did I greet the men? Pause. Did I greet the men? I didn't. Sanjay, forgive me. I want to greet all the men of the Glendavon district, those who are here and those who are worshiping <laughs> on YouTube. <laughs> I am more tired than I thought. All honor to the men who are here, the kings, amen somebody, who are in the sanctuary tonight and who are also joining us on YouTube. Um, all honor to you tonight. Tonight is all about you. We are just the fluff. Tonight, it's about you. Amen somebody. So, this gentleman, I never know something, so I'm going to tell you what he's told me about himself. He was born in Kingston. He attended George's. Is that one of the top schools in Kingston? Somebody say amen. Yes. And he attended the University of the West Indies, uh, where he got his bachelor's degree in science and his medical degree. He specialized in the field of, say it slowly, otorhinolaryngology. Did I get it right, Doc? Yes, I believe so. And uh, we just call them the ENT guys. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> right? And he studied in the United Kingdom, I did not know that, and returned to Jamaica in the year 2000 where he uh, joined the ENT department, that's ear, nose and throat department at the Cornwall Regional Hospital. And he has remained there all these years and now is the head of that department. Dr. Hemmings is also an associate lecturer at the University of the West Indies. Um, and he shares a private practice with his dear wife, who I also know. Greetings, Dr. Claudine. Dr. Claudine Greenhemmings, who is an ophthalmologist, and they share a practice. The Eye, Ear, Nose, and Throat Center, located at, write it down, Freeport Shopping Center. That's some free advertising, Doc, free of charge, only in Glendavon. Say amen, church. Only in Salt Spring, Lilliput, and Cornwall Court. Say amen, church. Praise God. We move on. I just hit that and run. Uh, Dr. Hemmings is a practicing Roman Catholic and is soon to be ordained a Catholic deacon. I did not know this. I've known Dr. Hemmings. Dr. How long we know each other now? We worked together on a committee for over 10 years, and I did not know this. Amen, somebody. He sits on several church committees. So he's right at home in Salt Spring where all of us in here wearing several hats, including our moderator. Yes, and he is now the board chairman of the newest Catholic boys high school 
in Montego Bay, the Monsignor Gladstone Wilson High School, located on the grounds of the Blessed Sacrament Cathedral. You see what the richness has come to Salt Spring tonight, to Glendavon, to Cornell Courts and Lilliput. He's shaking his head. He's a very shy doctor. <laughs> and he's the father, amen, of two daughters, Monique and Robin. Now, that's what Dr. Hemmings says about himself to us. What I know of Dr. Hemmings is that he is incredibly helpful and fabulously humble. He, he walks around the hospital, you would never know that he's the head of a department because you're even a big up in chase. Can I say that in the church now, sir? He is one of the most humble clinicians I know and he is very, very good at his job. And when I called him with little or no hesitation, he said, well, Lisa, yes, um, yes, I'm going to check my schedule. And, but as he said that, you know, Sister Joan, I know so the answer was yes. When he said that, but I waited patiently on the confirmation. Humble, helpful, a, a man with a servant heart. And his practice, both in life, I believe in his church, and in his practice as a doctor, gives that testimony. And so I am confident, as is my husband tonight, that he will do good justice to so I belong to Christ and he lives in me. So could you stand to your feet, ladies and gentlemen, as we welcome to this podium, Dr. Selburn Hemmings. God bless you, sir, as you share. Thank you very much, Lisa. Um, I think you have embellished it uh, quite a bit. But thank you very much. Uh, I must say thank you to Reverend Wisdom, Carl Wisdom, and Lisa, his wife, um, for inviting me here this evening. I learned a few names. I saw these names in the letter. Stephanie Taylor Smith, who is head of Family Life Ministries, and I hear that we are part of the Glen Devon District, but we are in the house of the Lord of the New Testament Church of God. So, Salt Spring, sorry. Good evening, church. I have been given an arduous task to speak to you this evening on a topic that is very dear to my heart and I will explain this to you later on why it is it says I am the temple Christ lives in me but before I go into the talk I noticed on the invitation letter it spoke to the months theme of families stronger together through discipline, courage, and hope. And these are very powerful, powerful words. I mean, I don't know who put together these words, but there must be somebody well inspired. But the word that stands out to me most here is hope. And I'm not quite sure if everyone here understands what that word means in the Christian context. I only, not too long ago, found out what it really meant. And I just want to share it with you. If I'm telling you what you know already, then forgive me. But in normal language, the word hope may be used like you might say, Oh, it's raining again today. It has been raining for 10 days. I hope it doesn't rain tonight so that I don't get wet on my way home. And what that hope means is that it might rain, but I don't want it to. But the Christian hope that, as I understand it, speaks to a promise. This is not a maybe or a if. It is a promise by God. And so when we hope in God, 
it is going to happen. There is no if, but, or maybe. And then coming on to tonight's theme, embracing the king in me. And I thought about it a little bit. Is it talking about me as king? Because the man is supposed to be the head of the household. That is probably one reason. The king, Jesus the king, who lives in me. But we can marry the two together. All of us. When I was baptized and put on Jesus, it is my belief that I became prophet, a priest, and shared in the royal family. Being a prophet, I have become a messenger of God. It affords me to talk to God directly. And I am a witness here tonight for God. A priest is a person who is not only in connection with God, but also with everyone around us. And when you take on Christ, you have to be like Christ. And so you have to help others to get closer to God. Because we all know after the fall of Adam and Eve, the reason why Christ had to come is to take us back to salvation. And so when we took on the Christ in our baptism, we all became part of that royal family and joined in the kingdom of God. So let me get not stray away from the topic, but get back to it. I am the temple Christ lives in me. Do we all understand what the temple is? So if we read the Hebrew Bible or the Old Testament, be it the first or if you read the, you know, the, the first or second canon, so some Bibles are longer than others. They speak to a lot about the temple. And there were two temples, if memory serves me right. Um, one was built by King Solomon, son of David, as we heard from the psalm today. David wrote the psalms. And that temple was destroyed somewhere in, I think it's either 386, or somewhere, in that, somewhere in that region. And then a new, that was destroyed by King Nebuchadnezzar when Babylon overthrew the Hebrews. And then a new temple was built, the second temple. But why, this is just an artist's image of what the temple should have looked like at that time. But at the time, the temple was where you went to meet God. And the temple had various parts to it. And there was the part called the Holy of the Holies, where the tabernacle was held. And this was the house of the Ten Commandments. And these were the basic laws, as we all know, that the Hebrews lived by. And so as Judeo-Christians, Christians who came out of Judaism, we also believe in these Ten Commandments. And so God was centered in the temple. But Christ didn't come to change the law, but he came to fulfill it. Because one of the things that he made us know is that God is not just in a place. He's everywhere. He's omnipotent. And so, we must now concentrate on where the temple is. It's not this place that we see here. 
this is just a diagram to show you a little bit more of how the temple was laid out. And um, I will talk a little bit more about what took place in the temple. You know, there are several different areas and, you know, the Holy of Holies, we are only the priest, people like Zachariah, John the Baptist's father, could enter. And we remember he was serving at the time when John the Baptist was born. But there are other areas that they had things happening, money changers. We heard, you know, we know about the money changers. And this was even, this was part of the temple. But Christ came and was upset at what was taking place. Let me get back to, I am the temple, Christ lives in me. So when I saw the theme, it was obvious to me, you know. And I wondered, was this drawn from the Bible? Or is it just <clears throat> something that we put together because we have read the scriptures and we pulled something here from there? But it actually is laid out quite clearly in 1 Corinthians 3, verse 16. Do you know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you. So uh, when the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, came down on the people in the upper room and in his fullness, because the Spirit of God was revealed even before that. We know that. But in the fullness, as God had promised, the Spirit of God came down and lived in us, came upon us, because we were all there in that upper room, as we are here today. So the Spirit of God lives in us. But I put this slide up just to show you some of the forces that exist in our world today. Forces that want to change our mind, want to tell us things that will move us away from where we should be heading, to take us off our road to salvation. I don't know if anybody recognizes this face, this gentleman, Anthony Bourdain. He's a known American chef. And he's quoted as saying, your body is not a temple. It is an amusement park. Enjoy the ride. And I've put the word here, hedonism. Do we know what hedonism is? Apart from the hotel? Do we understand fully what hedonism is? Hedonism is all surrounding self-pleasure. Anything that satisfies our earthly senses is part of hedonism. So if we eat too much and we feel good, or we drink too much and we feel good, that is hedonism. Yeah? And this is what this gentleman has purported. But if you get back to the temple story, this was happening at the time when Jesus was alive in our place of God, the temple, where there were money changers. And this was quite in keeping with the Hebrew laws. Reason is that it was only certain monetary denomination that were accepted that you could give as offering and so when you came from other parts with your own money you had to go to the fx exchange you know and um they'd change it but like everything else it went bad people start charging you know, 160 dollar for the dollar instead of 150 whatever it is 
And so when Jesus saw this, the other thing that they were doing, they were moving closer and closer to the Holy of Holies. Because there were specific areas laid out far from where God was. Because this wasn't really part of what the temple was about. But it was just a convenience, a, a one-stop shop, so to speak. So the people could do what they came to do. And so as we see here written in Matthew, and it's mentioned in John and other Gospels, and Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves and said unto them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. If Jesus was here today and heard this statement, maybe he would have reacted the same way. But Paul, in the next verse after when he wrote his letter to the Corinthians about we being the temple, answered this gentleman's statement. If anyone destroys the temple of God, God will destroy that person. For the temple of God is holy, and that is what you are. In no uncertain terms, there was no if, no but, but no maybe. He has told us that we are the temple of God. I will make this next statement just for information, I'm not judging anyone because judgment is not for me to make. But it's very unfortunate that that gentleman who made the statement was found dead and it is believed that he committed suicide. I can only think that he might have been struggling in his mind, in his head, having lived a kind of life that maybe he thought was good but somehow I am sure he wasn't satisfied there was something missing in his life and so I say this to say that we need to clean up our house our temple so that we don't get caught up in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. Because if we don't live as God wants us to live, he has told us in no uncertain term that if you destroy this temple that he's given us, this flesh and blood, he will destroy you. So, man, man as the temple, and I say this to me, in, since there are women here, because I thought I was going to speak to men alone. <laughs> People. So, my, yeah, so my, my wife, um, I must tell you that when, when we're reading and, you know, the, 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 the proverbial man is mentioned, she will say men or, and women or she'll make a note of it and say people. Um, and I have no problems with that. But how are we made up? We are made up of a soul, a body, and a mind. And our soul may be described as our spiritual being and our body as our physical being. But the mind itself is a little bit different because even though we don't, we can't perceive what the soul is, we can't see it, we can't feel it, we can't taste it, we know its purpose. But the mind is such a wide and vast part of us as human beings. And so when I break this down even further, 
you'll see in the pie chart, spiritual being gets one slice of the pie. The physical being gets one slice of the pie. But all the rest of the pie is, has to do with our mind. So, I've been given the task to speak to the men and the women here about wellness. And so let us look at the dimensions of wellness as outlined here. Easy, physical wellness. So we can look at some simple things. What do we do to keep our body healthy? Exercise. That might be a bad word to some of us. Because if we have any little extra time, we think we should rest. And, and this is, nothing is wrong with that. Nothing is wrong with that. But there's a time and place for everything. Exercise is essential. Like everything, you need to nurture it. So our bodies, we need to nurture it. So when you plant a seed in the ground, you water it, you go in and you loosen the soil and you do all sorts of things with it because you want it to grow healthily. And so that is what exercise does for us. It helps us to grow healthily. I've put up here, I think I said at least, even walking for 30 minutes three times a week is good. So I get a lot of people in my office who come and I say, do you exercise? And they say, boy, doc, I can't exercise. Why can you not exercise? The sun don't come up too early in the morning and by the time the sun come up, I have to get ready to go to work. The area that I live in is not a good area and I'm afraid of being attacked. And this excuses go on and on. But there are several other ways that we can exercise. We can exercise at home. You know, we can walk around the house. We can jump rope. You know, there are several things we can do. Diet. And this is diet of what we eat, not diet to lose weight. It's important that we should have a balanced diet. And a balanced diet includes fruits and vegetables. You know, we are, again, I'm going to, we are men and women. And so we think we are carnivores. We are meat eaters, you know, like a, a good piece of chicken or that is if we're good, but you know, a nice stew beef, oxtail, that kind of a thing. Pork, yeah man, with the, the skin and the other thing on it, don't it? The sweet part. But all of these food groups, fats, proteins, starches, are important, but in how we take it in, yeah? So it must be a balanced diet. It says here, avoid fried foods, soft drinks, processed meats, and sweets. Oh, Lord. I, I just see some people walking out the door. No, but, you know, it's important. And this is how the exercise part comes in. The more you eat, the more you have to exercise. So, some of us, the amount we eat, we probably should just exercise every day from our ghetto and only stop to eat. But it is important that we have a balanced diet. The other thing is that we, we, we binge fast, not necessarily because to cleanse ourselves or to, to um, fast for spiritual reasons, you know, to clear our minds, to, to, to help us to concentrate, to focus. But, you know, Christmas gone, so we did a little more than we should. And so in January and February, we're going fast, or we're going to stop eat, and we're not going to eat, and this and all of that. 
And the problem with that is your body shuts down. Your body is a surviving tool. And what it does is, if I'm not eating, it starts losing less. I wish my car would know this. If I'm not driving as much, especially with the gas price going up, it would use less. But it continues to use the same amount. And so, the, the better thing to do is really to just have smaller meals, but at a regular time. There are some other things that we've come to light recently. Because over the last two years, we've had this pandemic. And Dr. Lisa can tell you all about it. She's in public health. You know, her job, her workload increased significantly. And so we revisited some simple things like hand washing and social distancing and not touching each other too much and this kind of a thing, which has really dampened some of our social fellowship, some of our fellowshipping. But one of the things that struck me is that you've seen how the Japanese people greet each other. They kowtow, they just bow. And that left me to wonder, is the reason because they may have had some problem like what we are having now that they realize that touching 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 may not be the right thing to do but some the, the single most effective thing in not transmitting disease between us is hand washing and this way to do it is to sing happy birthday twice while you're washing your hands with soap and water and that will take off majority if not all the germs and my wife would like me to emphasize this one to get at least six to eight hours of sleep so like good husband and wife we sleep in the same bed but I don't probably need as much sleep as she does so I will take some of the work to bed and I'll read or do something else with the light on. But yes, we need some rest. So we can rejuvenate. I put here smoking. I'm not going to go with alcohol because maybe the evening wouldn't finish. But smoking is probably one of the single most harmful thing that anybody could do. I don't know if you have anybody here who smokes or was a smoker, but Dr. Lisa can tell you. So we worry about lung cancer. We worry about throat cancer, which I see a fair amount of. But that is just the few, the small percentage of problems that it causes. It damages almost every part of your body. It damages your blood vessels. It damages, once it starts damaging your blood vessels, then it starts damaging your all other organs because all your organs have blood vessels. Your blood vessels are the conduits, the roadways to the various parts of your body. So, I think if, for those of us who have sons, well, I don't have sons, but for those of you who have sons, um, you know, as we, we grew up as boys, you know, we, we, we like to try things. But, you know, steer anyone you know away from it. You know, we hear stories of, why I'm smoking from I'm 15 and nothing wrong with me and I'm now 75. He's lucky. I have five or six others who come to me in the clinic horse can't breathe and if they are lucky we can operate upon them and remove their voice box and they may live a few more years have anyone ever seen somebody without a voice box you have yeah 
they can't communicate as easy as it is. A lot of these, and I say men because most of them are men, can't read and write. They can't talk, they can't read and write. How do they communicate? So it is a very serious thing. That's why I've mentioned it here. In terms of medical things of, for wellness, I would suggest that we go and see our doctor or go to the clinic at least once a year, once we are an adult. Children might be able to get away with this because they probably visit their doctor with their parents a little more often than that. When I was a young doctor, I remember sitting in a room with you know, the bigger surgeons and there was this big discussion about who gets more health care in the family. And so the hierarchy became the children were to, taken to the doctors first because the mothers took them. The women went to see the, the female doctor second. And who came third? The men. Why? Because we're stubborn. We don't listen. And nothing can happen to it. Right? But this is not true. We can get sick too. Yeah? And we get caught up in some of the practices that the women don't do. Like smoking and drinking. You know? So, take care of ourselves. Because if we do believe that this is a temple, and we do believe that Christ dwells in us, you don't want Christ living in a dirty temple. Or a, t a temple that's filled with filth. Or, is, or even a damaged temple. Yeah? Screening. So, on the first here is prostate. Everybody know what the prostate is? Sometime in Jamaica, so we call it the prostrate. I see all the men squeezing up. Right? When they hear prostate, we have one of the highest incidents of prostate cancer in the world. And so we try to find out, and you know, everybody thinks it's this or that, even Aki gets the blame because we eat the most amount of Aki in the world. But the fact still remains we have a high incidence of prostate cancer. And we don't screen for it. And what I mean by that is the men don't go in and get examined for it. Be it physical examination or the blood test. You know, there is a, a little phobia about what needs to take place when you have that physical examination. Sorry? A big phobia. Yeah. But it doesn't define you if you have the test. Yeah? And, and I might be speaking in parables here, but you will understand. It doesn't define you if you have the test. It doesn't change who you are. Yeah? It's just a test or an examination. It is important because it is preventable. That's what screening is all about. A screening test is to try and detect something that we can stop in an early stage. Colon cancer, more prevalent in the first world countries than here in Jamaica, but it exists. And so we should go in and get what we call a colonoscopy. And you can do it virtual now, meaning you can do a CT scan of your belly instead of having 
the examination again by, I don't know if any one of us here have had a colon, colonoscopy. No. How many of us here are over 45? Yeah. So, you really should have one done. It is preventable again. If caught at an early stage, you can live. If not, if it starts spreading, your survival rate goes like this. I put in glaucoma because my wife is an ophthalmologist and she'd probably kill me if I didn't. But my father had glaucoma and that is the main reason why I knew it was my wife who tell, told me that I should get the pressures in my eyes. So we know what glaucoma is, right? Or glaucoma. Right, glaucoma, yeah. So it's basically like having blood pressure in your eye. So there's a liquid in your eye and the pressure is up. And so they have various machines that they can use to check the pressure. The reason why he wanted to make sure that the pressure is not up, like blood pressure, it can blind you. Well, blood pressure can kill you. This will blind you because it damages the nerve in the eye, yeah? And sometimes, well, like most nerves, once it gets damaged, you can't stop. You can't, sorry, you can prevent it from going on, but you can't get better. This is more in Dr. Lisa's realm, lifestyle diseases. And she could probably talk to you a lot more about it. But hypertension and diabetes is the scourge of our land. Why? Because we lose a lot of useful hours in the day, or days, when we get sick with a disease that is preventable. So we eat the pork with that little thing on it that tastes sweet. Or we sit down with a pudding pan and eat a dozen green gauge or black mango. And so our, our blood sugar goes out of whack because we are the potential for diabetes. And so we start having problems. We get a cut on the foot and it can't heal. So we end up at hospital. Days after days, you can't work now. You have dependents. So if we look at how we live, then we can prevent these diseases. Let's get into the mind. So the mind has several aspects to it. So I've touch, I'm touching upon emotional. So we as men, we don't get emotional, right? We're just bad and we, 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 don't, we don't feel. And we feel proud of not having emotions. We feel proud of not hugging our children. We feel proud of not kissing our children, you know, because we are men. And that's a woman thing, don't it? But we do have the feelings. I'm a man, and I do have the feelings. But in terms of dealing with our emotions, we must have a positive attitude. So if we feel sad, we have the remedy here. You're part of a group of people that belong to a lifestyle that has a remedy for emotion. We all believe in God. And we all are Christians. And we all have hope. And that is our positive attitude to deal with when problems arise. That is how we can deal with our stress. But what we must do is recognize when we have it. 
yeah and also we must listen to those around us who recognize that we are having problems I'll give you my example my wife knows when I'm stressed because I don't talk and for years she couldn't understand and I tried to explain her men have to work things out by themselves you know when women have problem them run to their husband or their sister or their mother and them lay out lay it on to their to someone else and ventilate but man don't do that man have to deal with it because we are man don't it I still try to deal with it I'm going to admit and so we still have these discussions I'll use the word discussions but there comes a time when we must recognize that we need help as men and it can be that we are just man and we can deal with it because a lot of times we don't deal with it and maybe some of these are these are some of the reasons why men do the things that they shouldn't do like drink and smoke because they run to those things to relieve the, they think that may be relieving their stress but the stress is still there because we haven't found the solution for it so we should find someone who we can trust or we can talk to when we have problems for those of us who are married our wives are there and it's not a sign of weakness if you go to your wife to discuss something it's not a sign of weakness and it doesn't I use the word emasculinate you it doesn't make you less of a man yeah the other thing is when we go for counseling or we a lot of reverends are here and we go to the pastor and sometimes they can't deal with that situation because it's a little bit more than just counseling and it behoves the person who is your counselor to let you know that you might need some more professional help somebody who is trained in psychology for instance who can help you through your 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 problems and I put here smile even when it don't feel like it we all know that sometimes we put on this plastic smile but one of the good things it does is that it attracts another smile instead of you put on a long face that attract another long face and then create another problem yeah so it's not so much a pretense but what you're saying is that I'm not angry with you or I don't have nothing against you and so you don't feel like you have something against I have something against you so you must have something against me all right we are all social beings so even in our wellness we should serve service makes or makes us healthy so in my church we have a a group called the Society of St. Vincent de Paul and this group serves for want of a better word those who have needs needs such as you know they can we, we provide grocery bags along with meeting with them sitting with them talking with, with, with people in our in our in our community and one of the things that the society tells us is that we who do this service 
benefit more than the people who we serve. And I couldn't understand that. So I am spending time, sometimes money, packing grocery bags, going and sitting with people and talking to them, you know, trying to make, create some hope in them. They must be benefiting more than me because I am doing something for them. But what, when I leave, I actually think I feel better than how they feel. I don't feel tired anymore. I don't feel like I do something for somebody. I don't feel like I've, it, you know, it takes something out of me. It actually gives me something. And it's like here this evening, I must say, thanks to the praise and worship team and, and from all this, you know, we had at the beginning because I must admit that Yesterday I had three meetings, including a board meeting that was strenuous. Um, had to prepare. Had some exams with medical students this morning. Worked all day. So by the time I got here, I must admit I was tired. But I am now inspired by your praise and worship this evening. So thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. Relationships, I'll move on to marriage. Married men versus single men. Did you know that married men live longer than single men? It is a fact. And those of us who are married wonder how. But it is a fact. Married men live longer. So, for those of you out there who are not married, if you want to live longer, get married. The other thing is, like your diet, you have to balance your social life. So you need some time for R&R, &R, rejuvenation, recreation, that sort of thing. But it can't be that for the younger people, the younger men who play video games or whatever, go on the internet, that you're going to spend an extraordinary amount of time and don't do your schoolwork. Or you're going to spend a lot of time doing something that you like as a person who is at, should be at work. Um, so you're tinkering with things at home when you should be at work providing for your family. So you have to balance your social activities with the things that you should do. Yeah? Even though some of us don't like to hear that. Again, how do we develop our mind, our intellect? I've put here education. But education is a broad term. It doesn't mean that you have to go to um, university or you know you have to get a PhD or you have to do this kind of thing but you should spend some time learning about your environment learning about what is happening around you the Bible is a good book to read I'm sure I'm preaching to the converted but it is a good book to read You know, people have analyzed the Bible not from the inspiration that it gives or the things that it teaches us, um, how we live with one another, but it's a good book to read. Some of the things are a little controversial, I must add, you know. Um, David, who was a great king, wasn't all that good. Did some really, really bad things. But we learned from that, didn't we? Yeah? And it teaches us an important lesson. Take David's story, for instance. Out of laziness, he committed murder. Laziness. Why I say this? Because... All good kings go to war with their army. 
he stayed home. And what happened to him? Couldn't keep his eyes to himself. And so eventually he committed murder because he was lazy. So it's a little thing that we don't realize that is serious and it escalated into something big. Yeah? Keep up with current affairs. So printed media, electronic media, internet, social media, and podcasts and so forth. So social media gets a lot of blame because we learn a lot of bad things from it. But it's, it's probably just a reflection of our society. There are a lot of bad things out there. But do we gravitate toward the bad things? No, we don't. We gravitate toward the good things. That's why we are here this evening. Yeah? So we use the social media in the same way. We don't use it to see what jewelry Beyonce buy or, you know, it's interesting. Um, I don't want to ramble on, but it's interesting that my, my two, young, I had two younger doctors with me on a ward round and they were talking and the young man says, what is this thing, man? Um, they have all kind of, you know, when, you have, when you're pregnant, you get a baby show. Now, there seem to be several other things in between. You have an ultrasound. When you find out the sex of the baby, you get a, a little thing and all kind of little, and we have several little things going on where we used to have one little event. Why? Because those who can afford it, do it. Yeah? So we don't, we don't, we don't necessarily need to f follow that. There is an old computer saying, garbage in, garbage out. So if we take garbage from the social media, it's going to be in us. And that's what we are going to put out. And be a lifelong learner. That completes the mental or the, the mind aspect of things. What about our spiritual wellness? I have much, many more qualified people here to talk about it, various pastors and bishops. So I have not said anything. I have put a list. And maybe you should, in your mind, make up your own list. Because you have the, the ability to. The mere fact that you are here this evening tells me that you know where you should be in terms of your f spiritual wellness. But what I want to tell you is my, what I use for my spiritual wellness. I use one word, love. As I grow in my spirituality, I un I st I'm starting on my journey to understand what love means. It's a word that we use all the time, and it's a word that we offer various meanings to. Um, but it's one word. The Greeks, however, have, has, have eight different words for love. I've put four up here. Eight different words for love. And the four that I've chosen was storgy, which means love between family members. Philia, like Philadelphia, friendship. Eros, which is between a man and woman, wife and husband, I'll say, add. And agape, which is unconditional love. I don't know if you remember in that last chapter of the Gospel of John, chapter 21, in those last few verses when Jesus was on the shore and the, 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 
the, the apostles were out fishing and then when they came in they saw him on the shore and they had breakfast and then Jesus said to Peter Peter do you love me and he says yes Lord I love you and then he said feed my sheep and he said again Peter do you really love me and Peter said yes Lord I really love you And then he went on a third time and he says, Peter, do you love me? And at this stage, maybe because he had denied Jesus three times before, Jesus is just, he might think that Jesus just wanted to make sure that he's not going to deny him again. That's why he's asked him. And he got a little bit frustrated and he said, yes, Lord, I love you. But some scholars feel that because we only have the one lo word love in the translation, it wasn't brought out to us as it should be. So what Jesus was saying to Peter, it is felt. Peter, do you agape me? Do you give me unconditional love? And Peter said, yes, Lord, I feel hear you. I love you as a friend. And so Jesus wasn't accepting that because he knew what the task, when he leaves the apostles, what they had to do they had to be sure about themselves. They had to be sure what was going to happen. Because he wasn't going to be with them anymore. So they now have to take on the persona of Christ. So he asked him again, Peter, do you agape me? And he says, yes, Lord, I feel you. Because he couldn't understand why Jesus was asking him. And then he even went on to say that the you know, the, what is going to happen to you after I leave you, which is Peter being crucified as well. So he wanted him to make sure that he understood this unconditional love. And so this is what where our spirituality should be. We should have this unconditional love for God. And that is the only way we can have spiritual well-being. If we, yes, we will falter. But we should always strive to have this spiritual love. Um, so, just going through again what the Matthew. So I come to the end now. Hope I didn't go over my time. But it says again, I am the temple, Christ lives in me. And I, I, I promise to tell you why I was excited when I was asked to talk about this topic. As you heard, I'm Roman Catholic. So, we believe in transubstantiation. Yeah? That is, there's a sacrifice that takes place at the altar each time we celebrate what we call Mass. And what you see in the species of bread and wine becomes God's, Jesus's body and blood of Christ and so I believe that Christ lives in me physically because every time I celebrate mass and I partake in this last supper this feast Christ comes in me and so that's why I think I can stand here tonight talking to you with this kind of conviction. Because this is what I believe. And this is where I am coming from. Yeah? It's the way I practice my spirituality, with my connection with God. Others practice differently. And it doesn't for me, it doesn't make a difference in terms of how you, what you believe, as long as you do have, you know, believe in God. And if you are Christians, you believe in Jesus Christ. Um, but that is where I am coming from this evening. And that's why I can stand here and say to you, 
I am the temple because I have to believe that this is the temple because if I'm going to take Jesus Christ into me I can't afford not to be clean and so I have to do the things that are necessary for me to be in a place where when I take in Jesus Christ both spiritually and physically that I can say yes Lord yes thank you very much All right, thank you very much. Can we again put our hands together for Dr. Hemmings? I, I know I know there are persons that may have questions, and we are going to leave the questions until both presentations in the interest of time. So at this time, I'm going to ask the precinct, can the, some members of the precinct come? We're just going to do a chorus. Yes, yes. Praise team, praise team. Praise team, yes, quickly. Just do a chorus, one or two. He's the greatest one. Forever the same. Come on, church of God. Can we stand? Just sh change your position. Shake yourself. He's the greatest one. Forever the same. Oh, from the Red Sea. He said, I need you. Oh yes Great is our God Our great is His name Forever the same Greatest is him. He's the greatest one. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, praise team. Once again, I want to extend thanks to Dr. Celebrant Hemmings for a presentation well done. I'm sure the men are encouraged tonight to take care of the physical and the spiritual and the emotional being. Without any further ado, I'm going to invite once again Dr. Lisa Wisdom, who will be Richard. coming to introduce to us Reverend Mullins. So please yes. make Dr. Wisdom welcome again. Amen. Alrighty, I'm here again. Say amen. Hallelujah. I am embracing awesomeness. As you embrace the king in you, I am embracing awesomeness in me. Say amen, church. Amen. <laughs> Those who join our prayer platform will understand that joke. And it's a good thing I'm giving a joke because our second speaker is of that genre. Amen, Reverend Mark. Hallelujah. Amen. 
he describes himself as a family man. Yes, embracing all the aspects. <laughs> Happily married to Julian, dear friend. Greetings, Julian. I'm sure you're watching. Julian Grandison Mullings for 23 years. We're the same, praise God. With three same wonderful children, Justin, Abigail, and John Mark. We have a lot in common, Rev. Right, Carl? Where is he? Yeah. Ah, he is a graduate of the VAS Prep School, Woolmers High. So we have two Kingstonians tonight. And he was the valedictorian graduate and recipient of the award for the best all round student from the Midland Bible Institute. Again, valedictorian graduate, ST, wow, I'm tell you, rich and um, recipient of the award, so best all-round student and best leadership qualities from the National Police College of Jamaica, formerly the Jamaica Police Academy. He has three other degrees in business administration, assessments, and ministry leadership. Wow. He is currently pursuing, Julian, I'm gonna pray for you, Two Masters of Science degrees in theology and also in business administration. Julian, I'm praying hard for your girl. He is the minister of the, of the Emmanuel Chapel in Mount Salem, St. James. There's a list here. I'm going to go fast because, you know, tonight we want to get the six to eight hours sleep. Amen, somebody. Justice of the Peace for <laughs> 10 years. Marriage officer and counselor. Chaplain with the International Conference of Police Chaplains. Restorative Justice Facilitator. Five. Um, immediate past PRO for the St. James Ministers Fraternal. Board member for the Iman Prep School. Immediate past chaplain for Moby High. He's a motivational speaker. I've run out of fingers on this hand. He's a conference presenter. He's a newspaper columnist. Salt Spring, Glendavon, Lilliput, Cornwall Courts. You couldn't want it better tonight. Somebody say amen. He's a recipient of the Governor General's Achievement of Award for Excellence. And he's received commendation from the government of Australia and Trinidad and Tobago. Wow. But I think this puts the cap on it all. He's a lover and servant of the Most High God and a loving family man. You could not, that, that just put the icing on the cake. Amen, Sister Cornwall Courts. God is good and he has gifted us tonight with the person of the Reverend Mark Mullings. Can you stand to your feet as we exercise our hands and our feet and welcome to the podium <laughs> Reverend Mark Mullings should I bust for you and tell him say he's very jokeify that's what I know about him God bless you <laughs> Rev as you share God bless you thank you thank you so very much thank you saints of God you may be seated I really appreciate the opportunity to come and uh, share with you this evening. Now, my task is a very, very simple one. I am to lead a discussion coming out of the presentation that was just done. And I think that is very, very, very easy for me to do, just to lead a discussion. Yes? But uh, I, I want you to acknowledge with me that, you know, as a minister, it's hard just to lead a discussion. Yes? You, you with me? Now, I want to acknowledge those who are online. You are in a probably a more privileged position than those of us who are here because we are here, you're already at home. But we are all one in Christ Jesus nonetheless and join the fellowship, amen? Lord have mercy, I'm gonna sleep on me already. Uh, do I hear somebody say hallelujah? hallelujah. Ah, praise the Lord. I, I, I wonder if I can get a stamp as to how many people are online. Maybe about 150 or so somewhere there hopefully all right so i'm asked to lead a discussion today or this evening on the subject of living mindfully in jesus living mindfully in jesus 
Now, I find it very, very important whenever we're going to have any kind of discussion around a particular subject area, very important to look at some of the key words that are in the subject and to do a kind of a definition of those words. And then wherever those definitions lead us, we put them together and come out with a kind of interpretation that should guide the discussion. Now, I don't have a lot of time to do this. I mean, two hours is really a short space of time for us to be able to go through this. And you can well agree with me that we could spend all night on a topic such as this, living uh, in Jesus, yeah? But we're not going to be here. I can get a long, long, long time. I can guarantee you that by midnight you'll be out of here. All right? So you with me on that? Amen? Well, I know the amen, and would I get like a week right, right about here or so, yes? All right, so if you can spare me 20 minutes, we can get through this. With me? Amen? amen. All right, I know the amen, and would I come back, man? All right, so I want us to do a little activity. Don't mind the color, my brother. Don't mind the color. It's only um, to make a little distinction, all right? So, um, do you want to come out? Your own stock. All right, don't mind the color. So I want you to find the end of that string for me. And find it already. Find the end of the string. And I want you to hold on to the end of it real tight. Don't let go. For dear life, don't let go. Yes? And I want you to pass on the ball to another person in your, over your section. Just pass on the ball to another person in your section. All right, so that next person who gets the ball, the ball of yarn now, ensure that between each person the string is tight. Remember, you know, for dear life, do not, same thing, Lord Jesus, have mercy. Help us, Lord. Um, pastor, uh, they don't follow instructions. The, 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 yeah, I, know, I know you don't have that problem like me. They follow instructions, so we're good. We're good, we're good, we're good. So for dear life, don't let go, you know, hold on tight. So between each person, the string must be very, very firm. Yes, like a guitar string. All right, so the person who has the ball now, pass it on to somebody else. Yes, and between each person, the string must be tight. Hold it tight, hold it tight, hold it tight. We are talking about... Living mindfully in Jesus. All right. Next person, pass it on. Keep it tight. Keep it tight. Now I know you're running out of people over here, so. But pastor, come to join you so that they can boast of the numbers. Just keep it going, but keep it tight. Keep it going, but keep it tight. All right. Yeah, man. Pass it on. Pass it on. Yes, yes. All right. So, you, you, oh, I know he has um, live wire, so he can come join. Yes, man, just keep it going, but keep it tight between each person. Right, keep it firm, firm, firm. Firm grip. If you feel the, 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 the string even tearing to your skin, don't let go. Yes, don't let go. All right. It's firm between each of you? Firm, firm, firm? Yes, man, but hold it with one hand, one hand. Yes, one hand. Now, keep it there for a moment, okay? Now, when we're talking about living mindfully in Jesus, the term living, the word itself living, simply, and I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I must establish protocol. I'm, I must acknowledge the host pastor, district overseers, leaders, all the members of the assembly across the various assemblies and say thanks for the opportunity to share. All right? Now, when we talk about living mindfully in Jesus, the, the, the word living means the pursuit of, of a lifestyle of a specific type. Very important that we understand that. The pursuit of a lifestyle of a specific type. Mindfully, the word means bearing in mind. And Jesus, we know, the Son of God. Amen? Amen, Amen online? Amen. Yes, man. All right. No, what you realize with the string, keep it tight, keep it tight. If at any point 
I pull on any section. You feel it? You feel it? Doc, you feel it? Did you feel it? All right. If I come here, yes, and I pull on the string here, I pull it so. You feel it? Did you feel it? Even a little bit. Did you feel it? Even a little bit. All right. Let's not leave out the other side of the room. If I come over here and I pull the string here, yes, you feel it, don't it? Yeah, man. You feel it, don't it? You feel it, don't it? Did you feel it? All right. Feel it, Rev? Did you feel it? But if I come here, yes, you feel it, don't it? Yeah, man. Because of that firm connection between each and every person. All right, relax now. I don't want anybody, you know, ball like my sister over here so well ago. The string. <laughs> All right, flash it off. All right? There's a firm connection between each of us. There is an African word named Ubuntu. I don't know if you've ever heard the word before. Some people say Ubuntu or Ubuntu, whatever it is, however you want to pronounce it. It simply means that all of us are interconnected with each other. So what affects one person invariably affects all of us. Create in your mind the image of a pool of water. And when you throw us, and it's settled, nice, clear water. If you throw a pebble somewhere in the water, it is not only where the pebble falls that is impacted, but there is what is created now, a ripple, and it goes outwards from there. And it impacts everything else until the ripple itself dies down. Yes? What we're talking about, is, as we speak about living mindfully in Jesus, if we are to interpret the term and we, we come up with something, it says pursuing a lifestyle specifically bearing in mind Jesus, who is the Son of God. And if we were to simplify that even more, it means to live lives that are pleasing to God. So in essence, the theme is saying to us that we are to live lives that are pleasing to God. Lives that are fully committed to living according to God's word, according to the precepts and the principles that are laid down in God's word. I want to remind us about Proverbs 16 verse 7 as we try to put this in a neat little package. When a man's ways... When a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. You want peace in your life? Seek to please the Lord. Come on, church. If you want peace in your life, seek to please the Lord. Because when your ways please God, even those who consider themselves to be your enemies will you'll be at peace with them amen. amen all right now as a personal reflection i want to this is not a confessional hall now, so don't put up your hand has your life been pleasing to the lord don't put up your hand please has this is something that you have to now consider as we talk about living mindfully in jesus has your life been pleasing to the Lord. I want right now, we're going to do a little object lesson. And normally I would have a, a bag of objects and I'd give each person an object and ask you to you know, take something out of the bag. But I want you to think of something right now. Any object, any object at all in this sanctified place, please. Any object, just think of an object. All right, so by now you have thought of an object. All right? Keep that object in the very forefront of your mind. And I want you to consider three ways in which that object is like you and three ways in which that object is not like you any at all. For example, I could choose a pencil. And one way in which I am like the pencil is that I, am, I stand firm, I stand erect. Yes? 
And one way in which I'm not like that pencil is that that pencil is slim. Right? I don't hold myself up as a poster boy for, you know, physical health. Doc absolutely is, and I think he's a perfect person to have done that presentation earlier. Especially, we, I love the part when he was talking about um, balanced diet. Every time I hear somebody use the word balanced diet, you know, you think of a, a, so a plate that has um, about half a pound of pork over on one side, and you know, you have a balanced amount of rice and peas on the other side. So if you were to hold it in the middle, it wouldn't drop on one side because it is very well balanced. But that's not what we're talking about. We don't talk about a balanced diet. Let's talk about portion sizes. And I, I particularly love the part where Doc spoke about eating a certain amounts. It's better to eat, um, you know, small portions, you know. Um, that's a difficulty for me. Uh, you can tell. Uh, somebody said to me, <laughs> somebody said to me the other day, boy, you know, you really, I say, yes, you know, uh, but when, when they are carrying my casket, they must say, truly, he was a big and heavy man. You know, yeah. But um, I'm trying, pray for me, you pray for me, while I pray for you, in Jesus' name. All right? But when we talk about living mindfully for Jesus, and I, I, I love how Doc went through all those, the physical and the spiritual and the emotional. Thank you, Doc. You did really make my job much easier this evening because I had intended to go through some of those very same aspects, but Doc really covered them beautifully. But there's one that I would really want to focus on and sort of bring out a little bit more just for the purpose of highlighting. If we're going to be living mindfully in Jesus, men, one of the things that God has, has, has given us as, 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 as our responsibility is that we must be the providers and the protectors and the priests of, within our homes. Lord, I thought the resounding amen would have been coming out there. We must be the providers, the protectors, and the priests in our own home, in our own spaces, wherever it is that we operate, so that, that when, when our children look at us and when our, when our you know, spouses look at us, they, they must see that Christ-likeness coming out of us. And I, I want to suggest to us that if we, especially as Christian men, were, come here, especially if we were as Christian men were, were living that out more in our lives, I want to suggest to us that we would have better societies. That we would see even one less crime because our lives would have impacted somebody out there in such a way that they see us as a father figure, even though the physical father, uh, the earthly father, may have been absent in their life. And you know what I use as an illustration? Just this evening, uh, that same little young man, I believe you're his dad. Is that his dad sitting back there? Yes. When I came in this evening and his mom came in, that guy took off like a bat out of hell and he was zoops and he went down there one at a time I hear boof and I was like, oh my God. And somebody was like, oh, you know, we don't really, you know, mind that anymore so much, you know, because they understand that he's a kind of live wire and he's like zoop zoop like Flash Gordon. And then he was, mom and, and, and doc were, you know, they're trying to corral him in one place because mom was going after him here. And he's like, he saw mom and he dashed that way. Doc came this way, went between the chairs. And I'm like, wow, I'm tired just looking at it, you know. And then Rev came in and, you know, you know Rev. Rev is the coolest cucumber in the entire field. That's your Rev. No, 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 clap him. And Rev just, Rev just went up, I, I wish I had a smaller person. Uh, Rev, Rev's daughter, um, I'm going to use you as an illustration, because you're just the smallest person here right now, so I just have to use you, uh, you know, sorry. That's all right, I know, I know, I have a daughter too, so I don't like when we do these things, all right? So Rev just came up, and I, I didn't even hear what Rev said, that's your cucumber for you, right? And, and so Rev just went like this, can you give me a hand? No, the other hand. Rev just went like this, and I saw that little boy just go like this. Not a sound. And Rev walk and just walk with him. Rev went up there, sir, to do something, and he was up there. He was not zoop, 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 zoop. I mean, he held on to the long broom up there, but that's okay. I was saying, Rev, check your six. Look behind you. And Rev was like, it's okay. I did not see that little boy is darting over the place. It goes to show, thank you, my darling. 
It goes to show the importance of the kind of impact that we can have in the lives of those who are around us. It goes right back to that chord illustration that we did earlier. If we are to live, to be living mindfully in Jesus, that's the kind of impact that we need to have in the lives of those who fall within our sphere of influence. And so family life is very important. And it's not only referring to those who are born within the family as husband and wife and children, but those whom we impact on a daily basis, those whom we impact in such positive ways that they see to the beauty of Jesus in us just as those who are in our actual biological families. I think I've done enough talking. Your time to talk back and feed back to us. What are some of the things that impacted you this evening coming out of the, 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 the presentation that was done? What are some of the things we see happening in society that we think can, can be different if we allow the living mindfully in Jesus' mindset to impact others who are out there. So let's, uh, do we have another mic that we can pass around or do we need to use the same one? Yeah, so what are some of the things we need to see happening? I think we have just about maybe five minutes or two minutes, um, just one question or so. 10 minutes? All right, thanks so much for that. So don't all speak at once, please. I can only hear one person at a time. All right? So do I, know, do I now need to pick on people? And, um, my, my sister has been very vocal, and I want to hear a little bit more from her. But I also want to hear from the men. I also want to hear from the men, all right? So, na, 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 na. I'm not meant to trouble Doc. Doc just did a presentation. So we're going to give him a little breather, all right? So I'm going to pick on my brother over here in the blue shirt. You know somebody will come over here, so don't you? You just know somebody you will be going to pick one. So talk back to us. What are some of your thoughts coming out of the presentation, or if you have anything else you want to share with us. Good night again, everyone. Good night. Well, based on the presentation, as Doctor was saying, the body is the temple of God, and yes, I do agree. And apart from just this, this spiritual part, we must take care of it physically and the emotional aspect of it also. As many a times we just only think about it at a, on a spiritual level, that the body is the temple of God, but we must also, also take care of the body physically and mentally. Amen, amen. Uh, is, there any, is, there, is there anyone who disagrees with anything that you just mentioned? Nothing at all? Well, I, I think as, as family, when we, when we have families within a family setting, that same chord, that illustration that we did, it, it doesn't only rest with me. You know, my, my wife encourages me to, to eat healthy. I mean, she is a health promotion and education, health education promotion also for the parish of St. James. So apart from that being her job, though, uh, out of love for me, she wants to see me eating healthy. And, and we have to be careful to eat our men. Uh, can I share something with you? The other day I was at a supermarket and I was buying something. <clears throat> I was buying something. And um, somebody said to me, uh, would your wife approve of that? You know, so I looked at the person and I really didn't really <laughs> recognize the person right away. And I said, well, you know, I really couldn't answer. I just said, well, you know, and then, then afterwards, She's introduced herself and she said, boy, she works with my wife and all that. So, so we still have to be careful, eh? Wherever it is that we go, they, they, we have to be careful. So I don't know if my wife got a call that I was buying what I was buying. <laughs> you know? All right. So I'm going to pick on green shirt. Not, and it's not a political statement. <laughs> Your thoughts? Um, this one is for Doug. Um, Doc, what are the early signs of um, prostate cancers? Oh, I'm glad you asked that question, you know, and I'm going to give Doc a moment to gel that up in his mind as he responds. Uh, did you notice, Doc, as he was speaking about the, 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 the prostate cancer and the exam? He said it's a very important exam. 
This was his gesticulation. And I looked across to my brother and I said, Did you see that? <laughs> All right, Doc. <laughs> A lot of times we, it's you know asymptomatic, and that's why when I say asymptomatic, we don't have any symptoms. I mean, when the prostate gets big, then you have problems passing urine, you develop urinary tract infections. Um, so when you pass the urine, it burns. Um, but a lot of re the reason for screening in general is because a lot of these diseases are silent. Yes. I mean, breast cancer in women. A lot of women get discovered because they go to their doctor and they, they feel a lump in the breast. And so we encourage them when they're having their shower to feel the lump in their breast. I'm not encouraging you to examine your prostate, but you know, there are, there are times when you know, there's an age that you should go and have the blood test done or or, or, you know, something. <laughs> that didn't come out right. But, um, <laughs> yeah, that's why we have screens, screening tests, because we know for sure that majority of the people, when they have it in the early stage, they don't know that they have it. So that's why we encourage you to go and get screened. Right, and, and, and I believe there is an age at which it starts, by 40, yeah, we 40, should start 45. doing And especially zero. if you have family history of it. Right, yes, yes. Right. Um, so if, if, if age is any indication as to the number of times it may have been done, uh, I'm almost 50 years old. Go ahead. Good night, everyone. Good night. Doc, the blood test for the prostate to the finger works. Some men say they would rather to do the blood test. But I'm getting to hear that the blood test is not proven to 100% as. The digital exam. Yes. I think you might have to give the doc keep yeah, my mind. Yeah, so again, I'm not trying to be funny or facetious. <laughs> I sort of work at the other end. But <laughs> <laughs> the you know the, the, the test, the finger test <laughs> is um, will detect if you have any lumps or anything like that. Um, but the blood test, because the prostate produces this prostatic um, antigen, the, um, it then is picked up in the blood. Um, in terms of which is more sensitive, as I say, I, I'm not quite up to date. But the, you know, I'm told the finger is, when you feel it, you know it, I guess. He, and, and it, I guess the adage works here. He who feels it knows it. <laughs> and, and possibly to within our context, there may be the, from a psychological perspective, we are, we are happier with the blood test than the digital exam because of how intrusive it might be. If, if I may weigh in here, I'm Dr. Lisa on the mark. Um, I want to underscore the point that prostate cancer is not the only disorder of the prostate that we check for. The enlargement of the prostate that caused what Jamaicans call stoppage of water, yes. that's, that's far more common than cancer. The blood test will not necessarily pick that up. So you'll come to Dr. and say, I have stoppage of water, and we do the blood test, but we don't do the finger test, and the blood test is normal. And so, well, it's not the prostate, it's the cranberry or the whatever I'm eating, but in fact, the prostate is enlarged just that the blood test is normal. So that is why we do both. We have to do both, because we're not only looking for cancer. 
Just like when we do, um, we check women and we do those examinations, we are not only looking for cancer. There are other things that can cause problems, yes? Many men, as they get older, they don't like to talk about the... Did you catch that on YouTube? Let me do it again. Y'all know what I'm talking about, yeah? You need, we need to talk about that because that can be a sign of many other things, right? So when we do that finger test, it will help us to pick up other things. We are not only looking for cancer. These are my few words in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise Amen. All right, uh, Rev, Rev had uh, his hand up and then the brother in front of Rev. I think our mic person also has a question. Sorry. All right. Maybe you can use a blue one. Mm -hmm. Use the one behind you. All right. Good night, everyone. Good night. Um, I don't know if it's the last one. There's two things, though. I think maybe what Doc could try to implement is if you have more females so that they are the ones doing the Sure. Test. I'm sure, sure you'll sure. have more men <laughs> doing the test, um, especially the ones. It just, it's just, it's just a fact. But switching from that, one of the things that you had said earlier, Reverend Mullins, I think that we we should not lose, especially as we look at the whole us empowering and becoming kings. Yes, is that whole sense of connection and yes. interconnectedness that we have right. and the influence of men yes. that we can have on other men. Other young men, yes. Um, you see, the challenge is this, is that a lot of us as men, especially when we are Christian men and in church, we tend to sit back and just relax. You know, we do what we need to do when we do need to do it. Yes. But we don't want to be the upfront type. We allow the females or the women yes. to go out and to to push themselves. Yes, and yes. then we have men just sit down and we stay quiet. Yes. And we need to recognize that persons outside are seeing and persons inside are seeing. Are seeing yeah. And if you have a church full of women, we are going to attract more women. Yes. Because no matter what, you know, men will come to look them, but they will not come to be a part of the church. Yes. But when you have a church of men demonstrating how men should react and act and behave yes. and that them serve God yes. and them still a man. Yes. When we say man, we mean them act like man. man. We don't talk about them, we act different. Right. It re we recognize that when that happens, the, per the man out the road will see that, listen, there are a group of men in that church yes. and them act like men. Yes. So yes. I want to understand what is happening yes. and be a part of that group. Yes. So yes. I believe, especially as we are looking at empowering men, that men need to stand up a little bit more. Yes. We need to rise up some more. Yes. And we need to push out some more. Yes. Not let the women them do it. No. Take charge in the church because yes. the connectiveness is necessary even there. Yes. Young men in the church and young men out the road and neighbors the over there who are men. Once we can demonstrate who we are and, and behave certain way, then it will touch and connect. Touch and with connect others. with others. And Amen. we need to ensure that we do that yeah. as men as we seek to empower um, or Amen. embrace the king in us. Amen. 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 I, I find it interesting as you spoke, the spirit just dropped this in my spirit, that the word is kingdom not queendom. And even if there is no king in that kingdom and it's a queen that's in charge, it's still. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh, I think that's powerful. It's still a kingdom. So it means that God himself has established a particular order. And when you break away from what God has ordained and how God has aligned things, then you are breaking away from what is good and what God intended. And anything else that God, apart from what God intended, can be godly. Jesus model. Yes. 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 And that in no way demeans women. That in absolutely no way demeans women. It means that we're following the biblical model. My brother, you had a comment. Uh, the microphone. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think our mic person also wanted to say something at one point, you know. You wanted to 
Yes. Good night, everyone. Good night. Yes. Um, I believe there is a challenge in the both on the health system and the patient. Because um, many a times you would, you would go to the doctor and uh, you would want that test to, to done. But the, the candidate or the, the person, the, the doctor who should carry out that test, um, they are a skeptic also, just as you who you the patient is skeptic because you would want um, a woman to do that test are more comfortable with a woman doing that test and on the other hand the doctor also is is not happy with that type of test doing that test okay you know because i have I've, i go to the doctor already about about you know prostate and they weren't, you know, happy in doing that test, that, that, that type of test. So I think there is, if we have, as, as Rev said earlier, if we have more females, you know, in that regard, to do that test, and everybody comfortable, they com comfortable and be comfortable also. Well, you know, you know that's why I mentioned earlier, within our context, because in another context, it, it is certainly not a problem because it's just how, hmm, Lord have mercy, help me Holy Spirit. It's just how we stay. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know how, I don't know if Doc might want to speak to that, but I'm not sure, that may have been a, an experience that you may have had, that may have been a one-off situation based on who may have been there. Uh, but as far as, I, as far as I'm aware, having been around quite a, new, a number of doctors, including doctors in my own family, they, this, is, this is a part of their normal everyday function, just like if they were to take your temperature. We know say many nurses do it, but the doctors do it too, or you know, whatever it is. Um, but that may have been a one-hour situation. Yeah, yeah I, I'd have to agree with Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I've not had the opportunity. Well, I've been doing ENT now for about 25 years, seriously, in terms of not um, practicing anything else. But um, so I probably have done maybe one or two in that 25 years. And maybe I didn't gravitate towards that area because I might not. I prefer... <laughs> I, I prefer, prefer um, working up in this area. But we are all trained. I did urology, which is the man specialist, for six months. And every day, you know, you had to do that test. And it's just a part of what you do. You know, um, and one of the things is we should, you know, women go to their gynecologist and have their tests done. You know, um, yes, you know, it, 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 there's, it don't seem to be any stigma or any kind of taboo on having that done. But um, it's, as I say, you know, it doesn't change you. You know, I mean, you don't come out with, with a higher tone voice or anything like that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> It's just, it's just something else for you to do, you know. Uh, and, and, I, and I think we should start thinking about it like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like a lot of people don't like needles, but, you know, some of them become diabetic. I, don't, I know yes. old, a, a, a little old man... We used to take care of our church, and he became diabetic, took the tablets, but because he couldn't leave the pork, so to speak, the tablets weren't working, and so he had to start injecting himself, so he said, Doc, I can't do the injection, we just can't do it. So I used to see him every morning, and I used to do it for him, and then we talk, and we go on, and I said, you get a little try on him, 
make up his face and him go halfway and then him say, no, that we can't manage it. And eventually he started giving himself the injections. Um, maybe because I had to go away once or something like that. But the point is that it, you know, if we accept it for what it is, mm -hmm. then we will, will do it. Yes. I, I mean, you made a very important point about men, you know, um, their role and men being men. I mean, in my church, we have a very active men's group. And we meet once a month on the last Monday. And we come together and we, we, we have fellowship, we pray, you know, we get, you know, we read. And then after that, we eat. Right? And we don't feel any way about that. We don't feel like, boy, you know, we're not real men. Mm -hmm. And what is most interesting to me is that a number of those men are not married to women in my denomination, Roman Catholic. But all of them bring their children and, get, and become Catholics because they have the strong sense of feeling that this is where they want their children to be. You understand what I'm saying? So we do have men that have a strong sense of feeling where they worship. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, so, it, it, you know, I, I agree with you, you know, we, 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 we need to get away from this thing about women being more religious than men and mm -hmm. church is a woman thing. Yes, yes. All right. I don't mean to cut you, yeah. but our time is, is going and I really want to hear from um, Livewire's daddy. <laughs> And, and this will be our, our final input, and then we will wrap up and hand over back to our moderator for this evening. Yeah, good night. Good night. Yeah, I think he kind of asked my question, but um, I think I have a, I cannot say something else. Um, the checking of the prostate, what if you want like a female to do it and not a male? Do we have that option? And what is the position you have to be in to, for them to insert the finger? Okay. All right. So, so yeah. um, for the purpose of, of the, the online, we say <laughs> doing the digital exam rather than terms like inserting the finger. You know, things like that. So, yeah. All right. So, yeah, for, for sure uh, we I, have... I'm sure you're not asking for a demonstration tonight. <laughs> Yeah, no, right. <laughs> so we, we there are two female urologists or man doctors in Montego Bay for sure. Um, so if you want to ask me aside, I can give you their names. Yes. And so you can you can go and visit with them. Yes. Um, I'm not for it yet. Huh? I'm not for it. I'm not farted. Don't reach farted. You're not free short. <laughs> you know. Um, Don't worry. Well, you have a very you active son. You soon reach farted. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So thanks so much for that. I guess we can have some interactions beyond this moment, you know, in this setting as we prepare to wrap up and when we are preparing to go. But it really was a pleasure for us to have been here. I'm speaking on behalf of Doc and myself to share with you. Uh, we, we must have done a very good job. You are all still here, you know, and so we are very happy for that kind of feedback. So at this time, I'll just say thanks again and hand over back to our moderator for this evening. All right. Come on, put your, put your hands together again. <laughs> Give... <laughs> uh, let me, let me see if I can compose myself. Reverend Mark Mullins. Um, <laughs> very well, very well, very well. I'm certain that anyone that was getting Josie, I was really feeling... You, you, you are now awakened and we can start over again. We can, we can. <laughs> But Doc remind us that we need our six to eight hours of sleep, so we are going to bring the curtain down. And so we, I want to thank Dr. Hemmings, um, Dr. Sabrina Hemmings, for speaking with us tonight. And 
Reverend Mark Mullins for adding the icing to the cake. I'm going to invite Sister Stephanie, Sister Stephanie Simit, to come to us now and to bring the curtains down on tonight. Yes, on tonight proceedings. Um, yes. Please come, madam. Of course, is that Sister Stephanie? She'll introduce herself. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, my name is Joan McCormack. I'm just deputizing for Sister Smith. I just want to say thanks to everyone for coming. We have learned so much, you know. There are some things that we knew before, but it was just refreshed in our minds. And I know even the women can assist the men in the different areas. So I must say thanks to Reverend Mullins and Dr. Hemmings for sharing with us. Thanks to our district church members who came from Glendevon, Lilliput, Cornwall Course, our pastor, Reverend Wisdom, Reverend Nelson, and for those who are watching online. Thanks for coming and thanks for joining us. God bless you and when you're through, we have, we want you to go to the back. We have refreshments on sale and also we have a gift for the presenters. So I'm gonna ask you to stand at this time as we close with the benediction. Oh, we are going to lift an offering. If you're here and you, you have an offering, um, the live wire father <laughs> will be doing the ushering for us. So I think we just sing one song. Thanks, thanks, I give you thanks for all you have done. I am so blessed, my soul is at rest, oh Lord, I give you thanks, yes, thanks, thanks, I give you thanks for all you have done, I am so blessed, my soul going to be blessed in the blessing the offering our God and our Father we just want to thank you for your blessings God you said you have given gifts to your children and seeds to the sower and so this evening Lord even as you have blessed us that we would have taken back a portion to your house we ask mighty God that you'll bless it sanctify it and continue to bless and provide for your people we give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Lift your right hand. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his throne. The only wise God we give honor, dominion, and power in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a good night. And thanks for coming. And please come again.